very much, and I'm delighted to be here to celebrate the, the 20th birthday of this great partnership in Saugus Industrial History Center, which, uh, which has really been a great, great center. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge Dal Dalia Schlesinger, and I'll be introducing her next. Uh, Nikki couldn't be here uh, since her regress, but obviously uh, Brian is here, and, and uh, uh, we're delighted to, that all of you are here. The Saugus Industrial History Center is a great success story for both the National Park Service and also the Graduate School of Education at UMass Lowell. In 1978, the odds were against the creation of an educational center in an urban national park in an old, economically depressed industrial city. But led by the lifelong Lowell resident, Senator Paul Saugus, a group of civic leaders had begun to reverse, reverse the economic depression caused by the exodus of the textile industry. Senator Songus believed that to rebuild itself as a thriving city, Lowell had to form economic and educational partnerships. He also believed that Lowell's landmark status as America's first large-scale industrial city could leverage federal funding for historic preservation projects, in turn attracting state and private investment. Paul Songus led the legislative process to create the Lowell National Historic Park in 1978. He and UMass Lowell Chancellor Bill Hogan also created the Lowell Educational Reform Commission in, early, in the early 1980s to address the needs of Lowell Public Schools. And uh, as Don Pearson was introduced, the director of that commission uh, was Don Pearson, uh, who was the Dean of the Graduate School of Education. He's now the Vice Provost for, educational, uh, for Graduate Education at UMass Lowell. And, uh, and Don oftentimes will tell a story about getting a call from the Senator one night <laughs> describing what this uh, model was going to be and how it was going to be, what it was going to be like dealing with the uh, school committee and the others in order to get educational excellence. At one point, the senator said to John, there's going to be some bloodletting. And then John tells a story that's just a vintage fall song is when talking about trying to make something happen in his home city. He was just remarkable. Uh, the commission adopted an idea of uh, Patrick Mogan, then the superintendent of schools, and you know, Mayor, we, we were showing our age when we think about all of these uh, folks who did so much and, and how we were there uh, at the time. But the notion was of Lowell as a classroom. And at the same time, the National Historic Park had the goal of creating a history education center in downtown Lowell, an outstanding educational center, one that would bring Lowell's history to life through hands-on activities and tours of historic resources. Sandy Walton uh, saw the wisdom of combining the Lowell, UMass Lowell School of Education and on October 15, 1991, the Saugus Industrial History Center welcomed its first group of students. Today, it's been mentioned over a million visitors have passed through the doors of this educational center that's named after Paul Saugus. The center has changed and it has grown. Uh, I want to compliment the superintendent, Michael Creasy, because the reality is when this center was created, the state funded about almost 70% of UMass's budget. As UMass has been privatized over a period of a couple of decades, it's now under 25% state funds. So the challenge in these partnerships are to be innovative and to find a way uh, to, to make things happen, in some instances with less money. And I just want to say that Michael has been a fabulous partner. And in, in, at times, there's some, there's some difficult situations that both the Park Service would face and the university would face in terms of, in terms of funding. But this uh, has been a priority of both institutions. Uh, these are the days when you're likely to, uh, to come across a group of UMass Lowell students and their professors uh, using Lowell as a text, or rangers from the National Park learning about how to teach using historic places. And now teachers from Maine to Hawaii immerse themselves in Lowell's history through professional development and workshops and institutes that are here. UMass Lowell and the National Historic Park are very proud of their association with the Songus legacy. I want to thank all of you for, who helped create this special educational place, the Songus Industrial History Center. I now would like to, uh, it's my honor to introduce Paul's twin sister. She is the president of uh, Schlesinger uh, and Associates, a consulting firm specializing in strategic planning and communication. She told me not to give too much of a, uh, of a commercial, <laughs> but it's in professional services, marketing, and government, community, and media relations, and crisis management, and communications firm. 
Additionally, she has developed and led international marketing trips for domestic clients, exploring overseas opportunities. She's planned and coordinated vis uh, visits to foreign countries to the, United, uh, to the United States to introduce them to clients and professional service capabilities here in the United States. In 1992, the Democratic, in the Democratic presidential primaries, she traveled extensively on behalf and spoke on behalf of her twin brother, the late Senator uh, Paul Saunders. She was the chairman of the Massachusetts delegation to the 1992 Democratic Convention. Uh, she, she has extensive community involvement that consists of memberships in all kinds of organizations, including serving on the Paul E. Saunders Center Advisory Board. Please welcome the Thalia Saunders Cluster. celebrate this wonderful, wonderful anniversary of a project that Paul held very dear to his heart when we were growing up, as I'm sure the mayor remembers and many others, Brian particularly, this was a town that you moved away from and now it's a town where people move to, whether it's young people or artists. And, and having something like the history of the uh, Songus Industrial Historic Center is something that draws people. I've had friends of mine whose kids have come up to me and said, on tea we went to the Lowell Songus Historic, something center, whatever it was, <laughs> and we did all sorts of wonderful things. And, and you understand how it engages, it engages children and, and adults, and you sort of remember back what your history was like and what this town has been like. And I want to thank the Park Service and Marty and mayor and the political establishment and the nonprofit establishment in Lowell. Your engagement in this community has made Lowell really one of the best places to do business, to live in, to raise your children. You welcome immigrants. You don't forget where you came from, where our parents came from, and the people who worked in these mills and how hard they worked and what a difficult time it was, but how everybody held together. And there were difficult times in this town. You know, Paul was obsessive about Lowell, as we all know, and made a difference. And he felt that you know, if you really pushed and pushed, and as Marty said, you know, a little blood on the floor because there was something that was really needed to be done. And the late night phone calls, Brian can remember lots of those, and something that had to be done, and it was the moment. I love this one story about Paul calling Jim Cook somewhere about one or two in the morning the second or third time to say, I need to have this X, Y, and Z done. And so finally, you know, the next day, Jim comes to the, to the house and Molly answers the door and she said, um, now, I have to see your dad. And he said, she said, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Carter, he's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> that was my brother. Um, I'm glad I didn't kill him, though you know, we came close on more than one occasion. But, I'm so proud to be here to represent him and Nikki, who I am extraordinarily proud of. To think that the Songus family has really made a difference in this, in this community and in this region and in this state. And setting up centers like this and the Songus Center and working with the university and, and working with the political leadership and the nonprofit leadership, it really says what you can get done and what a difference you can make in a community. And for that, I am eternally grateful for all the people who have put their hands together and, and have worked together uh, through difficult times to make this center um, a really major part of, of the educational program for not only Lowell, but you know, for the university and for, for young people across this, this community so, and state. So on behalf of the Songs family, um, thank you all. I am very, very proud of my brother and and as I said, of Nikki and all the difference that, you know, that sort of community and, and your help for all of it. So on just that note, thank you and happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs>